so crazy. We all had messages from the government yesterday. That over there, folks, is fire. So now it's pretty much just making sure the boys are okay. Look, can you can you see? The entire mountain's on fire. I'm so sad for the stories we've heard today. That over there, folks, is fire. By the looks of things, it's a pretty big one too. Scary. So we did a whole segment or a whole video actually last spring, late spring, early summer, wasn't it? 2023 about fire. Um, it's been pretty peaceful this year in the area of Portugal that we live. Um, it's, you know, towards the end of September and we are expecting a downpour of rain, the first rain that we'll have had for some, some months now, fairly soon in the next couple of days, it's supposed to rain, rain heavy. Um, so we are kind of looking forward to that. Um, it's a real shame though, just over there, right behind us, is a very, very, very big bushfire. Um, we're, we're quite lucky because down in the valley between us and the fire is quite a big river. Mm -hmm. The one that we often go and swim in. Um, I don't think it's coming over the top of the river, but um, you know, I'd be surprised if it makes its way down the mountain. It's so crazy. We all had messages from the government yesterday. Um, saying that we're on severe extreme risk for fire yeah. for the next 72 hours um, and it's really hot today and I woke up and I, I said to John there's such a weird energy about you know the, the day today like it literally feels like the atmosphere is supercharged yeah it does yeah it's there's so weird yeah um, the boys were all out of sorts there was so much crying going on this morning I had a raging headache um, and I don't know, it just, it feels supercharged. It's awful. Like everything is as dry as a tinderbox and it's... Ready to explode. It's ready almost. to explode. And yeah. you like under these temperatures and with wind blowing like we have today, it's like, it's a recipe for this kind of thing. And it's it terrifying to see know? that from the view. You know, like we look down over our lawn and stuff and now it's got this backdrop of the apocalypse behind it. I just hope everyone's okay. Usually by now we can see um, aircraft, aircraft you know, with fires this big. But also we usually log on to a, a local website where you can see the exact location of the fire to see that it's been reported, to see how many fire engines and airplanes and personnel are on the ground dealing with it and what the status is. I can't even get onto that website. It's crashed. Yeah. So I think, I think everybody's it's a big like, deal in Portugal mm. today, like a really big deal. Yeah, me too. Yeah. All right, back to work. We, we just thought we'd bring you down here and show you. Well, it's later on in the day. Um, they put the fire out that was through that gap. You'll remember earlier today. Now there's just one started over here. Pretty hectic. Now there's one, a new one that's just through different direction. Um, there are houses over that way as well, eh? Hope everybody's okay. I bet you somebody's out there with a hose pipe trying to put that out themselves. Oh my god, it's so close to people's homes. I see the flames coming up, can you? Yeah. That's hectic. That's so insane. So at this point, and only because of the message from the government, we thought, why don't we quickly go and do a shop? Get some bits into the house, just in case, kind of, you know, things get a little bit hairy didn't really think that things were going to get that bad. Last year, we had fires over on that mountain in the forests that were contained very, very quickly by the fire brigade and also by the air support with helicopters and airplanes coming over. At that point, we weren't really thinking this is going to be serious. We were sort of thinking, well, let's just be prepared because the government said it could be a bit hectic. But, you know, I'm sure everything's going to be fine. Just a normal day. It's just another day in Portugal. This morning, there was a big fire. You can still see the smoke just around the back there. 
Right now there's a big, big fire directly, behind us. directly behind us that we've just filmed. And also there's one right over there and two. one over there too. That they is are truly everywhere. frightening. What is going on? We're surrounded. We are surrounded by fire. They're yeah. a long way away from us, but look, that is yeah. so awful to look at. Look what, it's all across the mountain top. Careful. People just getting on with their day, you know, like it's normal. It's so disconcerting. I'm not going to lie. That's not There's a comfortable feeling. So having got back from our shopping trip and seeing that all around us, there were fires starting, it really sunk in that this time it was different, you know, that this year was different, that this was not like the last time there was a fire close to the farm. Um, I think we saw six or seven fires just on that journey, kind of just getting started. And it was like, where are they all coming from? I've seen so many people sharing on social media since like the, you know, we've got all these websites that you can keep a track of all of the fires and see what's being fought, how many people are on the ground, what sort of support is there, what state the fire's in, what stage it's at, whether or not they've managed to get it under control. And that website was literally reporting new fires, sometimes minute after minute, some of them sort of seven minutes apart. It was terrifying, the, the, the speed at which the world just set ablaze. So I think we got back from that trip and came back to the farm and the fire across the hill from us, which we had seen just starting as we left the farm, had extended hugely across the mountain. And as the afternoon progressed, it just got bigger and bigger and bigger until kind of nightfall. And then, I don't know, we really started to realize that things were gonna get pretty, pretty hairy. Oh, it really looks like the apocalypse out here. So, listen to this. It's like crunch, crunch, it crunch. It's dry as a tinderbox, oh, it really if you, is. If you drop the cigarette right now, you burn half the mountain. But look, you see those flames over there? Wow. You know, that's scary if your home is over there, hey? Absolutely oh. terrifying. Do you know when I when I think of, when I look at that, all I can think of is how how horrible it would be if a fire just came and burned straight through here. Oh God! It's, it don't, would don't, just don't be, even talk about it. It's awful. No, I mean, but you know, okay, um, don't talk about it. But Theo and B had it a couple of years ago, straight yeah, through did. their property. Yeah. You know, horrible. If you look over there, you see that big Whoa, crane. look at those flames. That big yellow crane. Can you see the big yellow crane and all the houses, how big they are? Now look at the flames up the side of the mountain and imagine how big they are compared to their <gasps> houses. Look at them right in look the middle. It's like an inferno. Thank you, Obi, for the kisses. Yep. Right there. Obi, out the way. We're all looking at the flames. Right in the middle of the smoke, so you see the big, big flames. Cool. <laughs> okay, cool. There you go. Look, 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 look. Yeah. Oh, gosh. I don't know if you guys here, yeah, you can see it really clearly now. So a, terrifying. A as the days progressed, we've been reading the news, and I'm sure you guys will have seen by the time this video releases that these kind of this period of 72 hours that the government's issued an extreme warning on we're having it's an it's an unusually dry time of year usually the rains have started a little bit by now um but also there's just unseasonable heat there's this weird heat wave we got up to 32 Wind. degrees today with wind gusts of up to 70 kilometers per hour um, and Portugal has actually asked the European Union for help today to send planes and firefighters to help us. The whole of the mountain is on fire now, Danny. Look That's at so terrifying. Look, look. 
and in parts of northern Portugal, especially um, not far from us, actually about an hour, maybe an hour and a half in the, the kind of region of Aveiro, there's actually a village that's burnt down today, or parts of it anyway, um, people's houses, people's homes, people's businesses. Um, and it's been a really awful day, I think, around the northern and central part of Portugal. What are you doing if you're, if you're a homeowner over there? You know, how do you protect your house? Well, that's it. And they, Portugal just doesn't have the resources to fight this many fires at the same time. I think having this many fires burning at the same time across the country is unprecedented. So it's pretty, it's just pretty intense, you know, to sit on your front lawn and be able to see six enormous fires around you. I know lots of you live in parts of the world which suffer with forest fires, you know, Australia, Canada. Um, all over the world so many of you will know what this is like um, and to anybody who's been affected or anybody who's lived through this before or you know a, a very a closer more frightening version honestly our hearts go out to you because this is really sobering really really sobering I think one of the hardest things during this whole period of kind of uncertainty surrounding the fires was this feeling of vulnerability and the feeling of not being protected, being out of control of the situation. Should the fire come close, you know, did we have the means to be able to protect ourselves? Did we have the means to be able to make sure that we were going to be okay, that the farm was going to be okay? It's a very scary thing to feel out of control. But there are places in life where you can feel in control. And I think it's important that we take advantage of those opportunities whenever we can. One of those places where we need to feel in control and safe and not vulnerable to the forces beyond us that could seriously impact our livelihood is on the internet. So a big thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring this episode and a reminder to all of you the importance of downloading a VPN. VPN stands for Virtual Private Network. And once you've downloaded the Surfshark app onto any of your devices or set up your account, Surfshark protects you while you're surfing the internet from anybody who would like to get hold of your information and use it for nefarious activities. It does that by encrypting all of your data so that anybody scaling around you trying to get hold of your information can't actually see it. They can't see what you're doing. They can't get hold of your bank details, your health records, your personal information or any of your data. It's pretty genius. Surfshark also allows you to move the location of your IP address, allowing you to virtually travel the world and make the most of offers going on in different parts of the world or access TV shows, which you may not be able to access. Surfshark is one of the most affordable things that we promote on this channel, and it's something that can really make a huge difference. We've worked with them for ages. We wouldn't go anywhere else for our VPN needs, and we use them on all of our devices because on one subscription, it's completely unlimited how many things you log into it, which I think is pretty cool. So click the link in our description below or scan the QR code that's on your screen and use our code the newbies, and you will get four extra months for free from your subscription with Surfshark. So um, it was starting to get pretty dark at this point and Tara was putting the boys to bed. Our uh, internet access had started to drop in and out and the websites that we were using to check up on fire updates on whether aeroplanes or firefighters were on their way was also starting to drop in and out of service. I started to get a bit nervous. Um, we had, of course, uh, prepared for a worst case scenario, but I was also personally starting to wonder whether it would be a good idea um, just to get in the car and head on out. It was a tricky situation because we knew that the road to Porto and all around Porto, which was our biggest major city, those roads were pretty much shut down. Fires along the side of them, pretty hectic stuff. Um, so Tara and I had give or take, we'd made the decision that the safest place to stay was at home. We'd been advised to close our windows, to stuff in any gaps, to try and keep smoke from coming into the house. But it made me really, really nervous, mostly for the boys um, and Tara, because, you know, I didn't want a situation where we went to sleep and the house filled up with smoke and that, you know, that was it. So for me, I don't know. This this is literally the first time I've ever been in this situation, so I don't know. You know, the idea that the house would fill up with smoke seems preposterous until you walk into your house and it smells like a bonfire, and then it's all of a sudden quite a real thing. So at this point, we were starting to feel the effects of the fire, but we didn't have any fire anywhere near us. 
what I thought was a good idea was just to head on out and have a good look around the farm. So I went for a walk, um, didn't go too far from the farm, a couple of hundred meters, 300 meters. There's a nice pathway, walk around the edges of the perimeter. Um, I went and had a good look around um, and I took my drone as well. Now, I know, I fully understand you shouldn't be using drones in, uh, in this kind of situation. I didn't know at the time. Um, and the reason why I didn't know is because I just didn't know. Like, I don't know anything else about fires and how to manage them. So I took my drone and the reason why I wanted to take that was to throw it up in the air and just have a look down below me to see if there were any fires anywhere near that I should be worried about. Um, the reason why they say don't use drones is because um, they might interfere with the, the emergency services doing their job. At this stage, the fires had been burning a full day and they were getting worse. There were no emergency services in the vicinity that I knew of. Um, there was no fire, siren, fire engine sirens. There certainly were no helicopters or, um, or aircraft in the, in the air. It was pretty scary stuff. Um, so I put my drone up, I had a look around um, and the fires were getting at this point way worse. We sent texts across to our friends on the other side of the valley to ask if there was any way we could help. Um, it sounded very much like they had everything under control. And I had a bit of a conundrum on my hands. Do I jump in the car and head on over to see if there was any way that I could help out? Which would mean leaving my family alone in the house without an exit route. We only had one car. So here's what happened next. It's really rare um, that I wish that I had a camera a real camera instead of having a, a phone. Um, but today's kind of one of those days um, and this moment right now, it's dusk over there. You can see is the sunset um, and behind me over there is one of the six fires that's raging around our farm at the moment. None of them are coming anywhere near us for now, um, but that red dot right there, that's the moon. And if I did have a better camera, right now you'd be able to see a huge amount of flames in amongst all of that smoke. For the people living on the other side of the mountain this evening, it's going to be a really, really scary night. That's for sure. Like we said before, we've got a, a river um, and a valley between us and that over there and us and that over there and that over there, nevertheless, <laughs> it can't be very, well. So didn't get much sleep last night um, for obvious reasons, as you'd imagine. Uh, the fires are literally raging and it feels, there's no other way of saying it, it feels genuinely apocalyptic. Um, we had heavy smoke coming across the farm last night. Um, it got inside the house. We were trying to sleep. It woke us up. It felt like there was a fire inside the house because of the smell. Um, so there was a bit of a panic. Um, it was pretty, you know, limited. So everybody, you know, wasn't that dramatic. Um, but it, we, Tara and I both got up at two o'clock in the morning and we were walking around the farm, just checking and making sure that there was no fire on our farm. It's about, I'd say three or four kilometers away. 
Um, but yesterday evening, we had six fires within a radius of, say, 10, 15 kilometers. That's a lot of fire. The fire's over there, buddy, but it's okay. Um, it's all right. I'm making the most of the last bit of clean air. I hope it's not the last bit of clean air, but we really are surrounded by smoke. I've come down to the deck this morning to do my workout because we are currently, I don't know for how much longer, beneath this plume of smoke that's coming across from over there. It's literally passing right over us, but it's quite high up. So let's hope it doesn't sink. What a terrifying night, guys. Honestly, we just, like, neither of us got much sleep. Like John said, you're just so worried that something's sneaking up on you in the middle of the night. Um, and there's a real sense of, like, we want to go and help, you know? There's people across the valley who desperately need hands on deck. But what do you do? I can literally see a fire engine across the valley right now. I mean, you think of the firefighters, the bomberos. They must be absolutely exhausted. And they've got a whole week of high alert with probably... Let's hope not, but more of the same. It's a really disconcerting thing, fire. And honestly, it really has made us question it like a whole lot. Um, to see it this extreme is a real eye-opener. Um, and after our announcement on Wednesday, well, I don't know. It's pretty tough with the boys, actually, because all they want to do is be outside. Of course, that's, that's our boys. Um, and the smoke right now, whew, it's just blown straight back in again. So... It kind of, as you'd imagine, shifting with the wind, the smoke comes and goes and comes and goes. Sometimes we genuinely, it feels like this little piece of Portugal is a sanctuary of fresh air and that it's clean and, you know, you can breathe it in. But right now, the, the smoke is pretty heavy on top of us. So I'm going to try and get the boys back inside. Yeah, it's been bedlam. Currently, all around us right now um, is fire. Um, and right on top of us is a whole bunch of smoke. Mm. I'm trying to keep it so that you can see us and, and the background as well, but the, the camera's just not getting both of those, um, those exposures quite right. It's, there's so much smoke right down in the valley. You can hardly see our view, and the light is really eerie and kind of yellowy and weird this morning. Um, and it's been, I think yesterday across northern Portugal, there were 128 fires burning at the same time. Mm. I know Portugal's asked for help from the rest of Europe and there were planes coming from France, Spain and Greece. And last night across the valley from us, on the mountain that we look across onto, they had raged a fire all night, right the way across from all the way over there, across the back of us here, into these hills over, you know, behind us here. Um, and we, we must have woken up four or five times throughout the night yeah. with the smell of smoke in the bedroom, even though everything was closed up. Yeah. We went outside to go and check what was going on. The views from the veranda on the stone house were pretty terrifying. They're, yeah, just hectic. Um, the boys are running around the farm. The smoke isn't too bad here at the moment. It has been hectically bad this morning. Um, so we, we're kind of running in and outside of the house. So if you see changes of clothes or um, we disappear, it's just because the smoke's kind of, kind of descended upon us. Yeah. And we really, you know, for anybody who watches us from Portugal and um, who was affected by the fires of 2017, who's been affected by any of the fires in the summers that have come before, or indeed who's been affected by the fires this week, our hearts are going out to you. We've had so many messages from people saying they've got family in Aveiro or they've got people living in... The various bits of, you know, of northern Portugal, central Portugal that have been on fire this week. I know that some people across the way from us lost their homes last night. Um, and there are some of the firemen who've lost their lives in the fight this week as well, which is just heartbreaking. Um, so I just wanted to send a bit of love and solidarity to everybody who's suffering through this. And hopefully the week ahead is a calm one. And... They get that it under wind. control. That wind it's, is the big problem. It's like the perfect storm at the moment. It is exceptionally dry. It is so windy and it's hot and it's yeah. just scary. So it was at about this point that we started to get messages in from friends and people around our community telling us what they were facing. And it was one particular message that absolutely broke my heart. 
and it was a video from our friend Diogo. Having had reports that the areas in which his apiaries were were on fire, Diogo set off on Tuesday morning to check on his bees and what he found was truly heartbreaking. In the fires, Diogo lost 52 colonies of bees across three apiaries and he's got 73 hives displaced without pasture to be able to make it through the winter. He's not the only one either. There are beekeepers across our local area who have suffered the same fate. When he sent those videos through, John and I both were completely overwhelmed with emotion and grief for him, knowing how passionate he is about his craft, how deeply he cares for his bees and how important they are. And I think that's what really struck me is that the impact of this is so far reaching. We just wanted to do something to help. And if you follow us on Instagram, you may have already seen that we have set up a GoFundMe page to support Diogo to get back on his feet, but also hopefully get some support to other beekeepers in our area who also so desperately need some help. Now, I don't know quite how to put into words or how to convey how humbled, touched, overwhelmed, just truly and honestly blown away we have been by the support that has come through on that GoFundMe page. We have almost, at the time of recording this, hit our target of 15,000 euros, which would cover the damages incurred by Diogo himself. So I'm sharing it with you all now to see if we could take this to the next level. When we set out, we wanted to help our friend. We wanted to help the bees. But now we have an opportunity with your help to make a real impact on the environment that's been so desperately damaged. The link is in the description below this video. No amount is too small. If bees can teach us anything, it's that even the tiniest little things can make the hugest difference. Thank you, thank you from the bottom of our hearts. The losses felt by so many around us are so huge. Um, and it's just, I'm so grateful that we have a community like you guys to be able to make a small difference in, you know, somebody's world. So thank you for being a part of that. <laughs> and I'm going to stop there and leave you with Diogo. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for supporting me, the beekeepers and our precious bees. All the proceeds will be used to repopulate the lost colonies and to feed the bees that are left without any pastures. And there's still a long road ahead, a lot of work to be done. A lot of colonies to reestablish, other beekeepers to help, a lot of reforestation to be done on the burnt area. Together we are making a difference. What's that, Mark? Shh, look at all this ash on the table. It's everywhere, everything. It's just literally falling from the sky. I don't think we can come outside. No ways, man. The eeriest thing is this light. It's like yellow. I mean, it's so apocalyptic feeling. I don't think I've ever, ever felt so vulnerable. This is horrible. Right, let's get things closed up in here. Oh, the smell is so bad. This door has got a really big gap underneath, so we've been wedging towels up against it to try and keep the smoke out as best we can, because this is our only safe space. We Just making that. sure the boys are okay. We, we haven't been outside all day. It feels apocalyptic here. It's truly awful. We're shrouded in smoke. There's this weird eerie glow about the place. I can't actually see where the fires are or where they're coming from. Um, it's pretty terrifying to be honest. John went out with Crusoe a little bit earlier to the local shop and reports that just from the top of our road, there are blue skies, but you can see huge fires all around us. In our local town of Amaranth, the rubbish dump is on fire currently um, and it's just thick black poisonous smoke pouring all over the city. The other city close to us, Margaret de Canabesis, is also shrouded in smoke. You can't even see across the street. Um, all of our friends are kind of just hanging on, you know. We're all actually really, really frightened and this has been one of the hardest days. Um, especially, you know, knowing what to do with the boys. We're here at home and the advice is to stay at home, stay indoors, to keep the windows and doors shut if you've got air conditioning to put it on. So that's what we're doing and I'm doing my best to keep them entertained. John's trying to get some work done. Um, but yeah, it's, this, this is harrowing. I, I am not enjoying myself one little bit. Anyway, we're going to do some painting now and um, see if we can pass a few more hours without any further drama really but have a look at what it's like out the window right now.
you know, look, can you, can you see? <laughs> it's, it's just scary. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. You know, there are small fires, big fires all the way on the side of the mountain there. And when the wind blows, it blows all of that smoke and it sits on the farm and it's really, really tough um, because the boys just want to be outside and we keep telling them, no, 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 you can't be outside, you've got to be inside. Um, I'm standing here, of course, because, um, you know, th there's, there's the, the, the deck and the house is up there. You've got lovely blue sky above the house right now. Maybe we could let the boys out for a little while, but um, I'm standing here because th that's probably the easiest way um, this, this new piece of land that we've purchased, it's the, it's the biggest view, basically. Um, it's a huge view of smoke. <clears throat> and it is, um, you know, I don't know what to say about it. Right, well, it is bedtime. I'm really pleased to report that it is a lot less smoky out here. Um, I think the wind has changed direction, which is a relief because that was a really long day. Um, a day I don't think we'll ever forget. I'm so proud of our boys for how they handled it. We had to keep them inside all day today, um, which is tough for two toddlers, but they were just absolute champs. And um, I'm so grateful that we're in this little stone house because we've just got that little bit much, you know, a little bit more extra space, which made all the difference to everybody's sanity. Anyway, John and I are just about to call it a day. Um, he's just been out here with the hose pipe, just wetting down the extension. Um, we've got the water. It's just a smart move to kind of make everything a little bit damp. Um, he's wet down the roof. He's wet down the walls. He's wet down, you know, the edges and the flower borders and all the rest of it. Um, and there's the moon tonight. I don't know if you'll be able to appreciate it so much on the screen because it's very dark out here. It is absolutely beautiful in a very eerie kind of disconcerting way. Um, I'm so sad for the stories we've heard today. Um, most kind of personal to us in a way, which isn't, you know, but the closest to us is um, our dear friend Diogo, who's been helping us with the bees, um, lost three of his apiaries today. It makes me so emotional just talking about it because, um, oh, it's just so tragic. We've heard of animals who've died in the flames and obviously people who've lost their lives. Um, thankfully not near us, but in the country. Um, and we have friends across the valley currently fighting fires and trying to keep them off their land. Um, it's a scary time for everybody. Let's see what tomorrow brings. I hope it's so much calmer. It definitely feels like the atmosphere is so much calmer this evening. Um, so fingers crossed. Thank you for all of your messages, everybody. I hope that you are safe wherever you are. Um, your kind of concern and love means the world to us. Good night, folks. We'll see you in the morning. Well, here we are. End it's of the, the end of the week. Yeah. Gosh. We made it. We did. And, you know, a lot of what's happened over this last week feels a little bit dreamy. You know, it doesn't really feel like it happened. Mm -mm. You, when you're in the midst of something like that, you, you forget that it can feel normal again. And it's remarkable how quickly it feels normal again. Yeah, totally. That's what I'm trying to say. We've got, we've got a lot of smoke in the sky still. Um, and ash continues to fall out of the sky. You know, for us, it's been a little bit of drama. And at times we felt, OK, should we evacuate? Shouldn't we evacuate? is staying at home the right thing to do we've heard so many different stories and everybody's had completely different experiences we know of two people who've lost so much and one of them is joao's girlfriend leticia and her family who had the fire come through their farm and burn all of their vines their neighbors lost their animals um, and it was pretty horrific i think most of their farm has burnt their home is okay and they are all safe but they lost their farm. I also know of another farm nearby, which is a beautiful, big, organic producer of um, vegetables and fruit. They've lost everything. Their greenhouses are gone and everything's gone. And of course, as we've mentioned a few times, our very dear friend, Diogo, um, having lost so many of his apiaries and so many of his hives. 
um, and as part of his beekeeping cooperative, which is the whole reason he does what he does, so many other beekeepers in our area have suffered the same fate. Um, anyway, just to, one last note, because I'm conscious that we've talked a lot and we are getting a few comments saying we don't work hard enough, we do too much talking. Sorry about that, Barbara. Yeah, I mean, no, I'm not, I'm not apologising. We work really, really hard. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> apologising. Anyway, what I did want to say is that um, this video kind of interrupted a pre-recorded YouTube schedule. So from this point onwards, we're going to go back to sharing what's been going on in the stone house with the kitchen, kitchen build. Yeah. Um, and the grouts. It, yeah. And so, you know, this... Back to normal proceedings and the building for those of you who think we're lazy and talk too much on Wednesday. Yes, absolutely. And we've got some really exciting, an episode that was supposed to come out today um, about collecting and harvesting grapes and making wine with our feet yeah. should be coming out next week now instead yeah. of today, which yeah. it was supposed to be. So yeah, exactly. Look forward to that one. So this has muddled things up a little bit. But yeah. Um, bear with us. And thank you so much for everybody's love, support, concern, messages. We have been inundated and we couldn't feel more kind of grateful for all of you. because mm. And a, supported. Yeah. In mm -hmm. a time when you can feel quite lonely and very, very vulnerable, it's incredible to feel the power of community around you. So thank you all for Charlie being good. that for us. Charlie good. All right, folks, we'll see you next time. See you Wednesday. Ciao for now.